I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to Physics with Beth and Beth. I'm Beth and today we are continuing our discussion of AP Physics 1 Unit 3, which is our discussion of work, energy, and power. So today we're going to just dive right into this little worked out problem of a cart on a roller coaster. A little bit of a preface about roller coasters. I freaking love roller coasters. I, I, I joke that inside me there are two wolves where one wolf wants to be going very fast and be up very high, but the other wolf wants to be very safe. And so roller coasters are at the perfect center of that Venn diagram, so I'm going to be having a lot of fun today. Um, one quick note though is that our roller coaster as a whole is not going to be very fun because we are going to be assuming that our friction is zero. And as we know, friction is equal to mu times n for fun. So no fun today on this roller coaster, unless you're me. Um, so what is our situation here? Well, we're going to say that we have our little cart of people starting up here at point A, where they're going to be at rest. They're at a height of 10 meters, and then we're going to give them the tiniest of nudges to send them careening down the roller coaster track. They're going to go down this ramp, end up at point B, then go back up the ramp to a height of six meters, and then continue on their merry way. What we are asked to do today is to find their velocities at these two points, at point B and at point C. And of course, we're assuming that our friction is equal to zero. So to start off, we're going to be approaching this problem from the context of energy, because it is so much easier than doing it any other way. Um, and because of the conservation of energy, we know that our energy throughout this whole thing is going to be constant. Now, because we have no friction, we also know that we're not going to be losing any mechanical energy. We're not going to be losing any energy to heat, for example. So our mechanical energy is going to be constant throughout this whole thing. And what specifically energies, which energy specifically, sorry, do we have at each of those points? Well, let's break this down. Well, at point A, we know that we're at rest, right? Well, anytime you hear the words at rest, we know that means our velocity is zero, which also means that our kinetic energy is equal to zero, right? So here at point A, we know that our kinetic energy is equal to zero. However, we are at a height of 10 meters, and anytime we're given a height, that should clue you in, okay, we're going to have some energy associated with our position there, or gravitational potential energy. So here we can write that we do have some gravitational potential energy that's equal to our mass times the uh, gravitational energy constant times our height, okay? And we'll solve for all of these things later. Let's just move on. Well, at point B, we're at ground level, so we're at a height of zero. So we know our gravitational potential energy is going to be N times G times zero, or just zero. So at point B, we know that our gravitational potential energy is equal to zero. However, we are going to have some potential, I mean some kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. All right, so before we solve for anything, let's just move on here. Okay, well at point C, we're going to have both a potential and a kinetic energy, right? We're not at ground level and we are still moving. So we're going to have some gravitational potential energy that's going to be equal to m times g times h once again. And we're going to have a kinetic energy that's equal to one half mv squared. Okay, and now because we know we're not losing any energy to friction, to heat, to anything like that, we know that our mechanical energy or the sum of all of these energies here is going to stay constant throughout our problem. And that little fact is something we're going to be able to exploit to help us out. Okay, but let's look here at point A. Say I want to solve for my potential energy here. Well, we're running into something of a problem, aren't we? Because to solve for our potential energy, we need to know the mass of our cart, right? So you might be thinking, well, what do I do from here? I don't know the mass of my cart. That's not information you told me, Beth, come on. So I can't solve for this, so I'm stuck. Okay, well, that's true that we can't completely solve for potential energy. But the fun fact is that we don't need to. We can just use it and exploit this little equation, and our mass is going to cancel out as we go on. So let's see how that works. So here, at point A, we only have potential energy um, equal to m times g times h. Our height is 10 meters, so this is just m times g times 10. And at point B, we have no poten gravitational potential energy, or rather it's equal to zero, 
and we do have kinetic energy, where this is equal to one half mv squared. Hey, this v is what we're trying to solve for, right? So I think we're going to be wanting to use this equation right here to help us out. Well, because our mechanical energy is constant, we know that all of our gravitational potential energy here is converted to kinetic energy when we get here, right? So we can set these two things as equal to one another. So I can say, hmm, I'm going to work this out here. I can say that m times g times 10, or my gravitational energy at point A, gravitational potential energy rather, is equal to my kinetic energy at point B. Now, what's something interesting here? Well, I have this mass term that I brought over from point A, and I have this mass term that's brought over from point B. So because both of these points brought mass to the party, it actually cancels out entirely. So we have mass. If I want to solve this equation for V, because that's my goal here, I can divide both sides by M, and it cancels out entirely. So now we just have G times 10 is equal to 1 half V squared. Well, now we're just going to do a little bit of algebra and solve for this. Um, multiply both sides by 2 and then take the square root. So I have 2 times 10 times g is equal to v squared. The square root of 20g is equal to v. g is equal to 9.81. So we solve for that. And that is equal to... So our velocity at point b is just equal to 14 meters per second. There we go. Just by using our gravitational and kinetic energies, our gravitational potential energy and setting that equal to our kinetic energy at point B, we were able to solve for that. So it's okay if you don't know everything in a problem when you're starting out. You can still write out what you know and then oftentimes those little pieces of information that you don't know cancel out as you go along. So now we're halfway done. We're just trying to solve for our velocity at point B. I mean at point C. Now this part is a little trickier because we do have both gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. But we know that the sum of these is going to be equal to this same number right here, right? So we know that our gravitational potential energy here is going to be equal to the sum of my energies here. Or in other words, all of my energy at point A is still all of my energy that's present at point B. So I can set this over, let's do this over here where I have my initial gravitational potential energy, or m times g times 10, is equal to the sum of these two at point C. So I'm going to just write ug sub c plus ke sub c. Well, what is my gravitational energy at point C? Well, that's just m times g times h. So m times g times 6 meters. So this here is m times g times 6, plus my kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared. So I have 1 half mv squared. So I have mg10 is equal to m times g times 6, plus 1 half mv squared. So now we know that this v is what we're trying to solve for, so we're going to try and isolate this, get it alone on one side of the equation, and get everything else over to the other side. So let's work on doing that. Well, I'm just going to subtract this entire term over from here. So I have m times g times 10 minus m times g times 6 is equal to 1 half mv squared. All right. Oh, I'm also going to notice, well, I want to get rid of this m that's with my v. So I'm just going to divide this side by m, which means I also have to divide this side of my equation by m, which means that all of my m's disappear, so I end up with 10 times g minus 6 times g is equal to 1 half v squared. All right, now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, so I have 2 times 10g minus 6g is equal to v squared, and I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Um, and also I'm going to note that 10g minus 6g is equal to 4g, so I have uh, 2 times 4g is equal to v squared. We're going to take the square root of both sides. All right, and so now I have the square root of 8g is equal to my velocity, and in other words, 
that is equal to 8. My velocity at point C is equal to 8.86 meters per second. So just by keeping in mind the fact that our mechanical energy is constant as we go throughout this roller coaster, we were able to solve for our velocities at point B and point C. Now, before we end, let's just do a quick um, check of our reasoning here. We know we should be going fastest at the lowest point of the roller coaster. We're going 14 meters per second here. We go back up the ramp, we should be slowing down. We slow down to 8.86 meters per second. Those both seem like reasonable values given all of the numbers here. Our units do check out, everything is in meters per second, which matches the units that we were given. Okay, we're good to go. So that's that. That's how you solve for your velocities at a couple of unknown points along a roller coaster track, assuming you're not having too much fun. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with me through all of that. Y'all are troopers and happy physicsing.